Welcome back to another video. I am currently sitting in my office with the girls. Kyle just left for work, so we're just having some chill girl time. Turn on the lights. Long time, no talk. I haven't talked to you guys since my bridal shower vlog, and I feel like there's so much to update you on. Okay, it is the week after my bridal shower. My bridal shower was on Sunday. It was the best. If you guys didn't watch my bridal shower vlog, I'll have that linked right here for you guys to go watch. Right here, right here. It was seriously the most special day ever. I'm so sad it's over, but I know we have the wedding to look forward to, obviously. So I'm very excited for that now, but go watch that vlog if you didn't. I was planning on vlogging a whole week in my life this week post bridal shower, but I ended up catching a bug. My little niece, Charlie, was sick. I think I caught something from her, maybe. I don't know, but the night of my bridal shower, I started feeling a sore throat coming on. And for me, my colds always start with a sore throat. Like that's how I know whenever I'm getting sick. And I like went to swallow that night and I was like a little sore. I'm like, no, I just knew it was coming. So I went to bed that night just knowing I was gonna wake up sick and I did. I woke up with like full body aches, headaches, chills, like the works. It was awful. My, my throat was like swollen shut. Luckily I didn't have school on Monday. Um, but what I did have on Monday morning was a in-person job interview and demo lesson, which I don't know the last like update I've given you guys on the whole job search for next year. I know I've kind of hinted that I've been looking for teaching jobs and I have applied for quite a few teaching jobs and private schools and charter schools. I've also applied for other jobs within the education realm, which I will dive into later on at a different time but this specific job interview was for a charter school in my area and they wanted me to teach a demo lesson for them to like come in and watch which if you've ever done one of those it is like so nerve-wracking i'd already done three rounds of interviews for this position so i was feeling really good about it like i felt really confident and they really just wanted me to come in in person just to like meet me and they wanted to see how i interacted with students in person which I totally get I feel like if I was a principal and I was looking to hire a teacher I would definitely want to see them teach or like see them interact with students so they did ask me if I had like a video that I could submit and unfortunately I don't have a video like I know a lot of people have taken videos during student teaching um, or before when they were like looking for positions but I don't have any videos of me in the classroom teaching that I could have submitted to them so I was like you know what let me just come in and I'll just teach a lesson for you guys to watch you know it's like so nerve-wracking but I was excited about it I was excited to go to the school it was a school that I've actually already subbed in so I knew the building really well and I knew some of the teachers even um if you guys are new here or if you have forgotten I taught last year and I left my job in May just to take a break from it because starting teaching during a pandemic and amidst like so much chaos in the education world I was so burnt out and honestly I just needed a break just to figure out what I wanted for myself and just what route I wanted to go down career wise and personal wise and considering Kyle and I had this big move already to St. Louis I felt like that was the perfect time because I had to leave my job anyway and we were moving and it was already a big change so I was like you know what I'm just going to take a year I was really grateful that I had my social media income to keep me stable for the year just to kind of figure out what I wanted to do with my life I had no idea what was going to come of it everyone kept asking me if I was going to go back to teaching I kept saying I don't know like you never know um, I didn't know if I wanted to do social media full-time and after doing social media full-time for a year I just kind of discovered that it's it just wasn't for me it's it's there's nothing that I hated about it I there are a lot of things that I liked about it but I just ultimately wanted a full-time job a full-time career so that is why I also accepted a full-time job at a private school back in January so I did social media full-time from like May to December and a school that I was subbing in offered me a full-time position and I've been a full-time permanent sub at that school for the past few months Love it so much. I have had the best experience subbing in and out of different schools in the St. Louis area. And I'm so glad actually that I didn't just dive into a teaching job right away and just take any job that I could find in St. Louis because that is what I did when I graduated from college and it ended up 
putting me in a bad position at a school that I didn't like and a role that just wasn't meant for me. Um, so I'm really glad actually that I subbed all over and got to know a ton of different school environments, worked alongside a lot of different teachers, worked alongside so many different grade levels because I have now subbed in every single grade level from like preschool up to eighth and ninth grade and I know what I like now. I like the littles, if not even more than I liked them before. I love, love, love the littles. That is definitely where I'm going to stay. And yeah, I just feel like this last year has just been like a year of reflection and growth for me and just deciding what I really want to do with my time and for myself and what's best for me um, mentally and emotionally as well because I found working from home just wasn't the best for me mentally. Um, my mental health struggled a lot while I was working from home and I kind of narrowed it down to why. I had to do a lot of reflection on that too. Um, but now I'm ready to look for a new position and I did not automatically think I was going to dive back into a full-time classroom teacher position. In fact, I thought I was going to do anything but that, be a permanent sub, find something else in the education realm. I thought about nannying for a long time, tutoring, literally anything, just a job that I could do that was still within the education realm. Um, but through searching for jobs and through subbing and connecting with so many different people and learning about job openings, I have come across a few job openings that were intriguing to me because I had subbed at the schools before and I knew the environment and I knew it was an environment I wanted to work in and that can make a whole difference in your job if you like the environment and the people that you work with. If and when I accept a position, I will make a video all about that and I will kind of dive in to the details of the jobs that I'm taking, why I'm taking it, why I will no longer be in the position that I'm in right now as a permanent sub, all of that, um, but I'm going to wait until I make that specific video. So if you do have any questions, um, leave them down below and I can answer them in a future video. All of this to say, I had a demo lesson on Monday, the morning that I woke up so sick. I literally was like this close to canceling my interview, but it was the one day that my school had a PD day, so I didn't have to be there since I'm just a sub. The only day that I could have booked this since I had to be there during the day while the kids were there without like taking a sick day from my job. And I had already had it scheduled for like a week and that would look so bad if I canceled it the morning of. I feel like it would just like sound like an excuse if I said that I was sick. So I just could not risk losing out on that position because I was sick. So I literally forced myself to go to this job interview and not just an interview where you're like sitting and talking, doing a whole demo lesson, wait for it, in a kindergarten classroom, you guys. I have never taught kindergarten. The lowest I've ever taught is second grade. I have a lot of experience subbing in kindergarten first grade classrooms and JK, like junior kindergarten preschool classrooms, which have actually become my favorite grades. Like now my dream is to teach junior kindergarten or kindergarten um, or first grade. So I was really excited about doing this lesson and I came up with a whole great lesson that I was excited to teach, but I was not feeling my greatest. Okay, I'm just gonna turn you guys around and talk to the camera so I'm not talking to a mirror, but I wanted to tell you guys about the demo lesson that I ended up doing with the kindergarten classroom. So I was so nervous to go into this demo lesson one because I don't even have experience teaching kindergarten. I was just afraid it would like show, but luckily, like I said, I have a ton of experience subbing in kindergarten in the last you know, six months. So I felt very comfortable with that age level and honestly very confident in the lesson that I was going to teach to them. So typically when you're given a demo lesson, you ask, what do you want me to teach? Like, do you want me to teach reading, writing, math? Sometimes they'll say, oh, just teach whatever you want. Usually I find, and I've only done a couple of demo lessons before, but usually I find that they say, do you math or reading? And they give you kind of like what type of subject material they're learning in the classroom at that time. This particular school that I interviewed at does a lot of project-based learning. So the principal said that right now they're doing a lot of work in their school garden and they're learning to count 
coins and do a lot of counting whenever it comes to purchasing plants and seeds for the garden. So at first when I heard this, I was like, what in the world kind of lesson am I going to do? I was hoping she would just give me like, oh yeah, they're doing reading right now about like fictional characters because that would have been so much easier to do a lesson about fictional characters. But instead she told me this and I really had to think deep about a good lesson that I could teach to them. So I went to one of my good friends who had taught kindergarten for a few years and I asked her what she thought about this and she gave me the great idea to do some sort of math lesson with counting seeds. And that gave me the idea to read a book about seeds. So I could incorporate a little bit of reading and a little bit of math into the lesson. I feel like that's really great to show them that I can do both. Thus led me to researching for books about seeds and I came across this book which I'll put on the screen for you guys. It was a book about pumpkin seeds which I thought was totally fine because it could still kind of wrap into the idea and the topic about their school garden. So the first thing that I did whenever I got to the classroom was just sit down, talk to the kids real quick, introduce myself, and then I actually asked them, I said, raise your hand if you like math. Of course, they all raised their hand. I said, raise your hand if you like reading. They all raised their hand. And I said, well, today we're going to be doing a little bit of both, if that's okay with you. And they're all very excited about that. The best thing about kindergartners is that they're always just so excited to learn. I think that's why I've really fallen in love with that age group because I've subbed a lot in like fourth, fifth, sixth grade. And their passion for learning is just like going away. And the passion for drama and attitudes is going way up. So that's why my heart is with the littles because I still want that enthusiasm whenever I come into the room. So I pulled out the book that the cover said we were going to be talking about pumpkins and I told them we were going to be talking about seeds, counting pumpkin seeds today. And I asked them, why do you think I'm reading this book? Just to see if they would connect that to the thought of their school garden. Immediately, one of the kids' hands shot up and he said, we have a school garden and we've been planting seeds. So I was so glad that they made that connection right away. You never know with kindergartners. Sometimes it's a hit or miss whenever it comes to making those connections. But he made that connection right away. So I was able to kind of smooth over that topic and kind of connect that to what we were going to be learning about that day. I then went on to read the book to them and I just made it a really interactive, fun book, stopping to ask questions, stopping to have them like raise their hand and make connections with the book and overall just make sure that they were enjoying and it, keeping them engaged throughout the whole book because sometimes that can be tricky with a group of five-year-olds. The entire book was really, really cute. It was all about kind of like estimating the amount of seeds in a pumpkin, whether a large pumpkin would have the most seeds and it ended up being that the smallest pumpkin had the most seeds and it was kind of like a life lesson that sometimes the best things come in small packages so it had a really sweet moral story to it, but along the way, you're doing a lot of counting as well. So I decided after we did the carpet read aloud, we moved on to a whole group activity and I had the classroom teacher pull up a presentation. I found this really cute presentation on counting watermelon seeds and it was very simple. It was just a picture of a watermelon with seeds inside the watermelon and they got to choose between the numbers on the screen. It was usually between like one and 10 seeds. Sorry, the girls are going crazy right now. In my classroom, when I'm doing whole group lessons, <laughs> Nala, look what she just did to the carpet. Girls. Can you, um, can you fix my carpet, ladies? Oh, okay. Never mind. Don't worry. I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. Can I finish telling my story? Anyway, like I was saying, in my own classroom, whenever I do whole group activities or whole group like presentations or lessons, I like to keep that really interactive as well, especially with the littles because they don't have a long enough attention span to listen to a teacher talk for 15 minutes. So I made sure that I showed the principal that as well. So whenever I got up, I didn't just talk and like solve the problems for them or just have them raise their hand. Instead, I had them come up one at a time and solve the problem with the class. So I always like to make it super engaging. I like to have the students take a lot of responsibility in coming up, counting with the class, and clicking on the number themselves. I usually try to keep myself out of it besides just monitoring and making sure that they're being responsible. Of course, that decision was hard for me to make because I didn't know this class, so walking into a kindergarten classroom where I don't know any of the students, I don't know any of their temperaments, I don't know what they're like behaviorally or emotionally, I don't know academically if they could handle an activity like this, but I decided that I was just going to do what I would normally do and obviously feel it out once I got there, and I realized that the class was actually really, really sweet and 
really bright so I knew that they could handle this activity. So after going through like four or five slides of us counting the seeds as a whole group, I told them they were going to move on to a partner activity and I decided to make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more hands-on since it is a very project-based hands-on collaborative school. So I brought in my own pumpkin seeds. I ended up buying like the most massive bag of pumpkin seeds off of Amazon when I definitely could have bought a bag a quarter of the size. But I brought a big bag of just like unsalted pumpkin seeds for them to use as their counters and then I gave each of the pairs a base 10 frame to count and I found these cute little pumpkin cards that had numbers on them 1 through 10 and basically what they had to do as a pair was one of them would grab a card and once they grabbed the card they would read the number and they would have to count out that amount of pumpkin seeds so if they pull out a pumpkin that said three they'd have to count out three pumpkin seeds on the 10 frame. I was definitely nervous about this because again that's a lot of steps and if you don't know the class and how they handle partner work or independent work well, that can be really tricky just to trust that this will go smoothly. But it did. I made sure to show them physically how we do it, go over instructions, ask for questions. I even like to call on a student to kind of reiterate the instructions that I said to the class just because it really gets them thinking about them. And I also make sure to reiterate how we're going to be responsible with the pumpkin seeds and we go over as a class how we're going to handle them. Are we going to throw them? Are we going to play with them? Are we going to eat them? No. And make sure that they know that they will get taken away if they're not handled responsibly. So they did that partner activity. It went really well. It was so cute seeing them work with pairs. I asked the classroom teachers for help with putting them in pairs because again I don't know them very well so I felt comfortable just saying if you guys don't mind can you group them for me or just put them in whatever pairs you think that would work best and I think they appreciated that because they definitely know their kiddos best since it's almost the end of the year. I gave them about 10 minutes to do that counting activity. I was just kind of watching and gauging how many cards had been pulled. A couple of the groups said oh we've already pulled all the numbers so once it got to that point I had them raise their hand if they were finished or had gone through all the numbers and if most of the kids seemed like they were done we were ready to move on. Keep in mind I only had like 30 minutes to teach this whole lesson so I did warn the principal that I may have overplanned, but obviously she loved that she'd rather me be over prepared than under prepared so I didn't even know if I was going to get through everything but I just kept checking in with the teachers on time and making sure that I had enough time and I was okay if I didn't get to something and I just let them know that it's okay if you tell me like we're out of time and we can just move on. But we ended up getting through everything after the partner work we moved on to individual work and I gave a worksheet which I'll show on the screen to each of the students to do by themselves independently and quietly and again this was just extra counting practice at the end of the lesson just to show me what they learned that day and it had to do with pumpkin seeds of course staying on theme so they had to count the number of seeds inside the pumpkin and write the number next to it. So overall I was really proud of this lesson. I feel like it gave a lot of variety. It showed the principle that I could teach whole group by reading the book to them and doing the presentation. It also showed that they could do partner work and independent work. So it just had a lot of layers to the lesson. The classroom teachers seemed to really enjoy it too. And they came up to me after and said that it was such a great lesson and the kids really enjoyed it. I forgot to mention that I also created a little book and it was a like pumpkin seed counting booklet that I just printed off online. I wasn't sure how much time I'd have to teach the lesson. So again, I wanted to be over prepared. So I decided to print out this booklet that if we had extra time, I could just have them color in the classroom just to have like that extra work. Or if I had early finishers, they could start working on this book. That's probably what I do if I had my own classroom as well. We ended up not having enough time for them to color the book, but I still was able to say thank you to the class and give them the book to take home to color. So the kids really enjoyed that too, getting to take home a little book. So all this to say, the lesson went so well and yes, I was like very sick the whole time teaching that but I just had to like hide it and push through and just like fake it till you make it because I was too excited for this lesson to just like cancel it and like risk the chance of not being able to teach it again or them like offering the position to someone else because I canceled. It is now Wednesday <laughs> and the lesson went very well. I have been in contact with them and I will have an update for you guys very very soon I promise to update you when things are all finalized and I have been interviewing for other positions so just waiting to hear back on a multitude of things make some decisions and when I make a decision I will 
let you know, I promise. But I just wanted to update you guys on that because I know a lot of you guys are interviewing right now. I know a lot of you guys are in the same season and it can be stressful and scary and nerve wracking and hard and emotionally hard too when you're like waiting on all of these replies from principals and phone calls. Um, but I know a lot of you are also doing demo lessons. So I just wanted to share that fun demo lesson idea. If any of you guys are teaching a kindergarten, first grade or even second grade demo lesson soon and you would like this lesson, like the materials that I use for this lesson, send me a DM or comment and I would be more than happy to send you over the materials that I downloaded and used for that lesson. So much fun talking about teaching stuff again, you guys. I just, I haven't been able to talk about this stuff with you guys in so long and it just is like so refreshing and so fun to get to talk about again. I feel like my passion is reignited. That was a very long intro to this video, but thank you for sticking around if you're still here. I know that was long-winded and a long story, but I feel like you guys are my friends. So I just wanted to update you guys on how that went because I'm super excited about it. already Thursday I feel like this week has gone by so fast because Monday <clears throat> we didn't have school so just like a four-day week you can definitely hear it in my throat I'm still sick <laughs> but I am feeling better I feel like I can handle a head cold like cough and like runny nose and all that what I can't handle is like the headache and body aches and like fever and chills that stuff is like so hard to get through so luckily that only lasted like Monday Tuesday and then I'm slowly getting better, but now I just like, oh, it's just like in my throat and I just feel like, ugh. I am keeping my distance from people at work. Don't worry, I have my own little office, so I'm in there as much as I can. And when I'm like in classrooms, I'm trying not to be too close proximity to any of the kids. But luckily, I think the hardest part was over the weekend at the beginning of the week. I think it is passing. These are like my favorite for soothing your throat it's the halls soothe and i like the honey flavor so good and it like instantly like literally the second i put it in my mouth actually i'm gonna take one right now like instantly soothes my throat all right i'm about to go into work today today is a thursday which means i'm working late today because I have to stay after for our after school program and manage that, so I probably won't leave until like 5.45, 6 o'clock. Alright, let's go inside. the end of the day today was such a good day it was a long day it is 5 30 and i'm just now heading out the door unfortunately kyle worked a night shift tonight so he already left the house and i won't get to see him at all today i'll just get to see him tomorrow morning when he comes home but i received a very exciting phone call this morning and i cannot wait to share the news with you guys of what happened today. I'm going to wait to put it in a separate video though, so I can do like a whole announcement video, if you will. Um, and that should hopefully be up tomorrow. So if you're not already subscribed, click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss it and turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever this video 
goes live tomorrow. I don't know what time it's going to go live, but it will be live. I post like all news first, usually on my Instagram as well. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, I'll have my handle right there. Go follow me. It's always linked down below as well. And yeah, it's so crazy. You guys are going to die. <laughs> like, I cannot wait to dive in to all the details and share this with you guys and just like sit down and talk all about it and answer all your questions. It's going to be so fun. I just cannot believe where life is taking me. Um, so fun though. So I can't wait to share with you guys. Sorry to leave you hanging. Stay tuned for my next video. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.